Sponges are the oldest animals in the fossil record. Whether it be body fossils of sponges, or spicules of sponges, or biomarkers of chemicals known only from sponges, these date back certainly to the Ediacaran period, more than 600 million years ago, and perhaps to the Cryogenian period, 700 million years ago. I don't think that's right at all. I don't think there are any reliable fossils of sponges from the Precambrian. I think that the only true sponges which can be reliably identified as sponges, whether it be their body fossils or their spicules, come from the Cambrian period of the Phanerozoic Eon. There are no Precambrian sponges which can be reliably identified. How can you say that? Look at all of these scientific research journal articles which document the occurrence of sponge body fossils, of sponge spicules, and of biomarkers of chemicals known from sponges in Precambrian rocks. Look at this evidence! I see that evidence, but lately there have been a number of authors who feel that they should reinterpret those original finds, that they were not as convincing as once thought. And so there are new scientific papers which come to different conclusions. But these fossil finds are in agreement with everything else we know about animals, whether it be their anatomy, their genetic analyses. Sponges are the most primitive animals alive today. And so given the diversity of animals in the Ediacaran period, sponges must have come prior to that. No other conclusion makes sense. Unless, of course, you take into account those recent genomic analyses which place the comb jellies, the tenophores, as the most basal animal group, su suggesting that maybe sponges are so simple because they were secondarily reduced from originally a more complex body plan. Wow, that was frustrating. Don't scientists know the answer? to when the first fossil sponges appear in the geologic record, or where sponges fit in the family tree of modern animals? The answer is technically no. Scientists don't know anything. There is no conclusion which is 100% certain, which can't be doubted, or questioned, or tested again, or seen in the light of new evidence. Now, it wasn't always that way. There was a time when people were 100% certain of their conclusions on the natural world. During the Dark and Middle Ages, people were certain. And for hundreds, thousands of years, these same conclusions were passed down about how the Earth worked or how living things worked. The problem is that many of the conclusions were wrong, and so thus, errors were passed down continually. In modern science, everything is potentially held up to question. Nothing is true because a scientist says so, or because it is published somewhere. One can doubt and question everything. Now this is frustrating in this case of sponges, because people can look at published accounts of, say, sponges in the Ediacaran, and say, I don't agree that those are true sponges. I think that they should be reanalyzed. I think that uh, the interpretation was questionable. But then that reinterpretation can later be questioned in light of new uh, events. The family tree of sponges can be questioned. One can say sponges are primitive. They must have come first. Or potentially argue maybe their ancestors were more complex and they became secondarily uh, primitive. One could say these genes overturn the conclusion you drew based on comparisons of ana anatomical features, but then one could use other genes to support the anatomical evidence, etc. It is frustrating. It is messy. But it is also exactly the way that science should work. The alternative is to say this conclusion must be true, teach this and only this. And the problem is then errors will be propagated. Only by constantly questioning 
and asking if there are other possible interpretations, and then asking whether the reinterpretation itself should be reinterpreted. Only then can we eliminate errors and have a greater degree in, uh, of confidence in our conclusions. So, there are arguments over fossil sponges and where sponges fit in the family tree of life. But this is to be expected if science is working the way that it should.